Okay, so a lot of people are going to be shocked that they're going to get the wrong answer to this equation. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the problem. We have 3 minus the square root of 2n plus 2 is equal to 8. And as I indicated, uh, there's going to be a lot of you out there that are pretty good with algebra that are going to get this problem wrong. Now, what we're trying to do here is solve for n, but we do have a multiple choice question. Let's take a look at our answer. So A is 23 over 2, B is 50, C is the square root of 6, and D is null. Another word for null would be like the empty set, so that would be that symbol right there. But uh, anyways, feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I want to walk through step-by-step step exactly how to solve this problem. And again, a lot of you are going to be kind of like on the wrong track, but you're going to take a very wrong turn. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'll explain all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at the problem before I show you the answer. Seems pretty harmless, right? Doesn't seem to be too difficult. What we have here is what we call a radical equation. This little symbol here in math is called a radical. Of course, you can think of it as a square root as well. But again, we have 3 minus the square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to 8. We're trying to solve for m. Let's take a look at the right answer. The correct answer here is D, null, or the empty set. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know what that word means, uh, but I think you did this problem wrong. I think the correct answer is A. Now, if you got A as your right answer, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, you made a uh, wrong turn at a critical juncture in this problem. Of course, I'll fully explain this in just one second. But if you got this right, well, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you are clearly a certified professional expert in solving radical equations and checking uh, for extraneous solutions. And that's the part of the problem that uh, I think a lot of people are going to get uh, confused about. And uh, if you are confused, well, don't uh, feel bad. A lot of people struggle with radical equations over this particular part of the problem. So, uh, you know, in some uh, respects, if you got this problem wrong, it's actually a good thing because I'm going to clear up a very common source of confusion here in just one second. All right, but we do have an equation. Here is our problem. And uh, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if, uh, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing, uh, what should I do? Well, uh, you have a multiple choice question, okay? You should always take a guess unless you're going to get penalized for wrong answer. So uh, those of you out there that are still taking math tests, never leave a question blank, right? So just pick something. So some of you might be like, hey, I don't even know what this word means. This looks like a good guess. Well, guess what? You got it right. But of course, if this wasn't a multiple choice question, you're going to have to know how to do the math. But we do have an equation here, right? So one thing that you can do is plug in values to see what works. So let's suppose um, we plug in like 50, right? So this would be like the square root of two times. Let's test a 50 to see if this is a good solution. So that would be two times 50 plus two. So two times 50 is 100 plus two. So that's the square root of 102. So we have three minus the square root. Actually, let me kind of write this a little bit better right now. So this would be three minus the square root of 102. Is that equal to 8? Well, no, that's not going to work out, right? So here, if this was 100, we'd end up with a negative value. So this is clearly not the answer. And you can kind of test these different solutions. Now, a lot of you uh, might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I did this, uh, uh, you know, what you're talking about. I tested my solutions, and this works, okay? A, 23 over 2 works. Now, if you are adamant, you're like, wait a minute, I'm very confused uh, because I did plug this in and it worked out well. Again, you're not understanding a very critical aspect of this problem. But let's go ahead and get into 
uh, the mechanics of solving a radical equation or a square root equation. So basically, when you have an equation with a square root, what you want to do is effectively isolate the square root. In other words, you want to get it on one side of the equation and you, went, you want to get your numbers on the other side. Okay, so of course, you know, like an R problem right here, you're going to have to do a little bit of work to get it to this point. But effectively, you, you kind of want to get your situation to like the square root of x equals 4. Okay, so do whatever you have to do to get the square root on one side or the radical on one side and all your numbers down to one number on the other side. Now, once you're at this point in a problem, what you need to do is square both sides of the equation to get rid of the square root. So the square root of x squared is just x, and then, of course, x is equal to, in this case, 4, uh, 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, or 16. So most of you might be saying, yes, Mr. Utah Math Man, again, I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, what's going on with you? I think you're wrong, and I'm right, because clearly, you know, you're doing what I did. Well, here is a big, big part of this problem. Anytime you square both sides of an equation, okay, so particularly, you know, in a scenario like this, uh, where there's a variable involved, you can introduce something called extraneous roots. So this is a possible answer. X is equal to 16 is not the final answer. We have to check this answer into the original equation. In this case, it was the square root of X is equal to 4, right? So that was our original equation. Now, checking... Uh, this solution into the original equation, a lot of you are saying, yes, yes, I did that, I understand. Well, there is another little sub-aspect to uh, checking for extraneous solutions that tend to confuse a lot of people. Now, why would I know this? Well, maybe it has something to do with, like, the tens of thousands of homework test quizzes, you know, that I've graded over many decades. But uh, anyways, don't feel bad if you are lost. I'm going to clear things up. But let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. All right, so here is our lovely square root or radical equation. What we want to do, again, is isolate this part of the problem on the left-hand side or one side and get all our numbers on the other side. So here we're going to want to move this 3 over with 8 so we can get this part of the problem isolated, and then we'll square both sides and go from there. So let's go ahead and do the algebra right now. All right, so we have 3 minus the square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to 8. So our first step is we'll subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Effectively, you just kind of add down in a column manner. So uh, what we're going to end up with is negative, right? We have a negative in front of this uh, square root of 2m plus 2. So this is negative square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to 8 minus 3 or a positive 5. Okay, now we have to get rid of this negative in front of the square root of 2m plus 2, or not. We can literally just square both sides from here. But uh, this is not too difficult to get rid of this negative on the left-hand side if you want to do it. Matter of fact, let's do it. So if you want to get rid of this negative in front of this square root right here, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 1 or multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. It really doesn't make a difference, but uh, let's go ahead and see the result of doing that. So here we have the square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to negative 5. All right, so we could have kept, uh, left our negative sign over here with the positive 5 over here. It doesn't really make a difference. What we need to do now is square uh, both sides of the equation to get rid of that square root or radical. So uh, it's going to look like this. It's going to be parentheses, uh, square root of 2m plus 2 in parentheses squared, right? So I'm squaring this side to get rid of the square root, and then we'll square this negative 5 on this side of the equation. All right, so negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25, and uh, the square root of 2m plus 2 squared is simply 2m plus 2. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. So here is what we have. So let me show you the rest of the work. So we have 2m plus 2 is equal to 25. Now we just uh, want to solve this lovely basic linear equation for m. So we'll subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. We're talking about basic algebra here, right? So then we're going to add down our column manner. So 2m plus nothing is 2m. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 25 minus 3 is 23. Now you can kind of see where I'm going here. Uh, we're down to uh, m is equal to 23 over 2, right? Because I just divide both sides of the equation by 2. And here is the answer. So at this point, a lot of you are fuming or like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, this was uh, option A on our multiple choice question, right, 23 over 2. And I put that in purposely. So I'm going to scroll back up here. 
because this is what any good math teacher would do. Uh, they are going to give you answers that are the result of common errors and common confusion. Okay, so I guarantee you at least 50% of the people watching this video, uh, maybe even more, selected 23 over 2. Okay, even though they think it works in the equation where the answer is null. So what's going on? Well, this is where this problem is going to get very interesting. But um, if you got to this part of the problem, okay, you got m is equal to 23 over 2, that's actually very, very good. And uh, really what we need to do is uh, kind of review how to check uh, solutions, okay, because this is a part of the problem where a lot of people make a mistake. All right, so this is good if you got to this point. But what we need to do is check 23 over 2 into the original equation. All right, so if m is equal to 23 over 2, well, it's going to make the um, left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. In other words, if we're going to replace this m with 23 over 2 and do all the math, we should end up with an 8 over here because uh, 8 on the left, and if th this is an equation, it's equal to 8. That would be a true statement, right? So what we're saying is uh, this whole thing here is equal to 8. So when we plug in a 23 over 2, we replace this m with, with the 23 over 2 and do all this math, we hopefully will end up with an 8. If we do, uh, do not, well, it's not the solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so, but uh, before we do, obviously, uh, you know, I got to stop and ask, hey, do you mind subscribing to my channel? No, I'm asking you. I'm not telling you, uh, but I do need your help. Now, if you um, watch my videos or if this is the first one of your videos, let me just tell you quickly what my channel is all about. Primarily, my channel is about really trying to make math clear and understandable for all people, okay? Uh, and uh, really, I guess another way I kind of think of what I'm trying to do is encourage people to never, ever give up on math. I think that's a message that doesn't give enough um you know, it's just not put out there. You know, we hear all this bad news about bad news about math performance. Oh, you know, math scores are going down. People are struggling with math. It's just a lot of bad, bad news. We need some good news. And the good news is that you can absolutely be successful in math, but you got to start believing in yourself. And you need someone to say, hey, you can do this stuff. And when I tell you that you can be successful in math, you can believe that. I'm not tr uh, patronizing you. Because the number one reason why people struggle in mathematics uh, is their thinking. They start to think, they start to doubt uh, their ability to do math. I'm telling you, you can be successful in math, but I'm also telling you, it does require a lot of work uh, and time. And most importantly, you need to find uh, someone who can teach you math in a way you like and understand. You need comprehensive, um, clear and understandable math instruction. That's really critical because if you're not getting good math instruction, well, it doesn't make a difference how much work and time you get, you know, you put into it, you're not getting all the information that you need. So if you need really strong help in mathematics, well, I think you might really benefit from checking out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here, radical equations, extraneous roots, uh, you may want to check out like my algebra two. Oh, you can, I teach this in my Algebra 1 course, but check out like my Algebra 2 and or Pre-Calculus course uh, for those of you that need to really understand this stuff. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on with the problem. And the key, I think the key highlight of this video is not so much getting to this point of the problem, uh, solving for m is equal to 23 over 2. I think a lot of people can get this far. The key aspect is what I'm going to really get into right now. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, replace this m with what could be the solution, but we just don't know this yet. We have to check, and uh, we're going to plug in m. We're going to plug in 23 over 2, uh, replace that m with 23 over 2. Okay, there, there I said it. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and start simplifying it. So, so we got the square root of 2 times 23 over 2 plus 2. So here uh, you can see we have 2, 2 over 1. The 2s cross cancel, so we're left with 23 here, right? So 2 times 23 over 2 is 23 plus 2. And we're going to continue on. So we have 3 minus the square root of 23 plus 2 is equal to 8. So 23 plus 2 is 25. So we have 3 minus the square root of 25 is equal to 8. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on because here is really what I've been leading up to this entire uh, time. All right, so uh, 3 minus the square root of 25 is equal to 8. What do we do now? All right, what is the square root of 25? 
Now, a lot of you, if I asked you, what's the square root of 25? Some of you are going to say it's 5. Uh, others of you are going to say the square root of 25 is positive and negative 5. In other words, uh, you're going to use the negative version as well, or the negative root. Well, what we want to do here is only use the principal square root. The only time you use the positive and negative of a square root is something like a quadratic equation scenario. So like, let's say you have uh, x squared is equal to 25. Well, this is a quadratic equation. There always will be two solutions. When you take the square root of both sides, x is equal to positive and negative 5. But if I just say, hey, what's the square root of 25? What you want to answer with is only the principal square root. Okay, And this is a very, very subtle concept that will confuse so many algebra students, right, or those of you that need to learn this stuff. The principal square root is the, uh, the positive version only. Okay, So when we're checking extraneous roots, we do not use the negative version. Okay, So in other words, uh, the square root of 25, you're not going to say positive and negative 5 because now we have to... Uh, you know, ask ourselves, well, which one is it? Is it 5 or negative 5? Well, it's not negative 5. It's only positive 5. And that's going to make a huge difference here, as you're going to see in one second. All right, so if the square root of 25 is only positive 5, or just positive 5, let's go ahead and continue on. So 3 minus the square root of 25 is positive 5, which it is. That's the uh, principal square root. So now we have 3 minus 5 is negative 2. That is not equal to 8. Okay, so therefore... Um, our solution uh, back over here when we plugged in this 23 over 2 is not a good solution, okay? And there's no other solutions to uh, check for, so therefore this equation is null, or it's an empty set, meaning there is no solution to the equation. Now, let's suppose uh, you were like, all right, but uh, that didn't work, but let's suppose I'm thinking of uh, the square root of 25 as both positive and negative 5, so if we turn this into a negative 5, right, so we're like, well, maybe it's negative 5. Uh, the square root of 25 is negative 5 like this. Now you're like, well, 3 minus a minus 5, this is 3 plus 8, and or sorry, 3 plus 5, which is 8. And you might be saying, oh, wait a minute, it does work out because 8 equals 8. Well, again, it's not negative 5, right? The square root of 25 is not negative 5, not in this case because we're only using the principal square root when we are checking for extraneous solutions. Now, if you didn't know that, you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I thought I was a top-notch algebra student, but uh, this part I didn't really understand well enough. Well, don't feel bad because in my experience, uh, uh, extraneous solutions, principal square roots, and things like this, it's not really uh, stressed as much as, that sh as, a, as much as it should be. Boy, I'm <laughs> having a tough time talking today. It's not stressed. You know, hopefully you have a good uh, math teacher and a good math textbook. But if you were confused about this, well, you're definitely not alone. But hopefully now you will never, ever make this mistake when checking for extraneous solutions. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.